morning, Eberhard. Good morning, everybody. And uh, I agree with your last comment. SG Park put the pressure here because he did an excellent implementation. We are very pleased. Uh, but he gave us on our shoulders some more, uh, you know, uh, uh, strengths. But uh, I guess uh, we, will, uh, we will try to mimic what he have done. We have a similar anatomy and uh, something to discuss with all of you. I think it's interesting. So maybe we can begin by, yes. Kim, can you give us a high view of the patient, just a clinical statue and all the data and all the measurement, and then we will discuss about the strategy. Yes. Yes. Uh, good morning, uh, ladies and gentlemen. And some, I introduced the second, uh, first cobalt cases. This patient is 80 years lady, a very uh, short status, uh, 140, uh, 45 centimeter. Uh, New York Heart Association Class 3 uh, DOE and past medical history, multiple comorbidity. So that's why Euro score is very high, 22.3 percent. Next one. It is baseline echocardiogram uh, finding, uh, LT valve area 0.89, tricuspid valve, and mean pressure gradient is uh, 33. Vmax is 4.1 millimeter per square. Anyway, the baseline, the TE measurement annual loss is 19 millimeter, normal ejection fraction. And, and we also done by the CT, the right side column in the executive similar, no, 19 in a, uh, in a left side, the coronal view in a 22.2 millimeter is the maximal size. The perimeter in a, some love that the cobalt in a 71 millimeter. So it is much more, the 15% overstretching. What about the next one? Yes, the problem is this patient is uh, so right side is uh, anomalous region to just uh, beside of the left main. The, however, in a, a coronary height to annulus to the left main is a 14.5 millimeter. A right side in a 12 millimeter, uh, quite uh, enough si enough uh, some distance. Okay. okay. Look at this on the moving picture. For this CT. The 3D CT plus the time dependent. Can clearly see that. Next one. Next one. Yeah, that's your iliofemoral artery is very beautiful. Okay. So, uh, regarding the strategy, tem thanks, Kim, for this uh, information. Uh, just to share with you, the strategy that we were discussing was, as you guess, femoral access. There is not too much to discuss about this part. Uh, the second part was which size valve we are going to choose and again maybe the echo give it 19 that normally will drive us to discuss a 23 mm -hmm. uh, if we come back to the CT scan finally uh, 19 to 22 a mean of 21 mm -hmm. it's a uh, it's I think a good strategy to think about a 26 uh, core valve rather than under 23 and if we want to go a little deeper in that if you have a look on the angiogram that is in front of us i hope you have the same angio that run in front of you you can see also that the aorta is a little diseased too at least it's dilated so just to remember you that the 23 uh, upper part valve is 35 compared to a 26 that is uh, 43 so finally we could also uh, have a nice fixation at the upper part with a 26 rather than a 23 this is a mini, uh, very little details, but it's important. And after here, what we were discussing is, what is the risk here? PVL, probably like the previous cases, is most likely not to be an issue here if we implant the valve correctly, because there is not too much calcification. So we are not concerned about PVL after the implantation. Uh, there is not too much calcification. So we discuss, you know, uh, using a pre-dilatation or not. And the general uh, attitude was, uh, why not to, uh, to escape for this part? Uh, that will plus satisfy Eberhardt, uh, he's right in this, uh, in this field, that when there is not too much calcification, it's really, really reasonable to do for direct valve implantation. It is what we are going to do here. And uh, after the last thing that we were discussing is, in this case, is the risk for the coronary. Because finally, we always have to assess uh, if it's uh, safety or not. And here, uh, we lack the measurement at the ST junction where the ostium of the finally left main and right coronary are 
together. So uh, it is very important to protect or to be sure that we are not going to occlude this uh, or uh, occlude this uh, ostium. So we will uh, we will have discussed, you know, to do an NGO during the balloon. But finally. Uh, we will assess it by the angel at the time of the implantation because we feel that there is not too much risk here. I don't know what is the uh, point of view of the panel, Eberhardt, what is your feeling about this last uh, yeah, well, maybe concern, I don't know. No? I, I would like to ask the panel members, maybe Paul you can uh, give your opinion about that. Yeah. I think the choice of a 26 in this case is, is better than a 23 because the ascending part is huge. And also, uh, I think by choosing a 23, uh, I, I'm, I'm sorry, 26, uh, probably you can implant the valve a, bit, a little bit lower so that you can have more space uh, between the valve and the uh, left main and right coronary ostium. Michael, any, any concern um, with the right coronary? Is this of any concern using the core valve and the, the abnormal uh, takeoff of the right? No, I think, I think uh, when, when it comes out from the left side, I think uh, the, the, the important thing that we do not occlude the, the left main together with the right coronary. So um, John Claw is right in pointing out that we should think of ways how to check the make sure that the left main as well as the right coronary is patent during our implantation. Mm -hmm. I don't know whether John Claude would think of ways to like protect or, or, or make sure that I mean, I know cases That's have been point. done with a guiding, yes. with a guide wire yes. in, the, in the left coronary, just to make sure that we will keep it patent at the end of the procedure. I think it's very important that we keep the left side open because it is uh, the, the right comes from the left side as well. Mm -hmm. Any comments from the panel to, as to pre-dilatation or not? I think, I think uh, pre-dilatation still is something I would like to do in this case. Because during the balloon inflation, you can do a contrast injection just to show uh, the patency of the coronaries. Dr. Hong? I think, uh, first of all, the uh, abnormal location of the uh, coronary artery, in this case, is, is a very a uh, good indication for the core valve compared to the, the, the Edward valve. So in, in these cases, if you use uh, the core valve, uh, I think the occlusion, the risk of the uh, occlusion of the coronary ostium is uh, very low because uh, the coronary cusp was uh, concaved. It was uh, protected. And second one is, uh, uh, depends on the, the patient situation. I think it's uh, the, without the predilation, is uh, the reduced uh, the risk of the uh, cardiac injury. So uh, I think uh, it would be better to the deploy the core valve without the predilation. Any other comments from the panel? Actually, on this level, may I have no concerns uh, with either valve, even with the CPM valve, I don't think left main is any issue because the left main is really high and the left uh, corner cuspid is really not uh, calcified. So there's no concern for the left main occlusion. Okay, so you've heard everything you needed? Yes, uh, yes about, well, yeah. needed. I think it's the discussion. Maybe we can go a step further together because now we are going to advance the valve because uh, we uh, decided to go without, uh, without. predilatation. And of yeah. course, we discussed, like I mentioned, the fact to do an NGO for the coronary risk. I don't feel that we face any, any significant risk for the coronary. Mm -hmm. Of course, it's only when the valve will be implanted that we will know that. But what we can do, it's at uh, two thirds or a little more than two thirds of the implantation, we can make an NGO. We choose a projection that yeah. reveals the ostium part of the, of, the of the vessel. So we are comfortable to look, you know, the distance between the frame and the ostia, and that will tell us, uh, you know, finally, if we can continue deployment or not. You know? So I feel comfortable to go without predilatation in this case cases, despite this uh, very limited risk of coronary obstruction here. So I'm sorry we have to wait because the valve is uh, just loading now. So, uh, uh, so what we can say and discuss here, it's, uh, you know, some part have not been too much mentioned is the atrial fibrillation. So you don't know, and uh, maybe you don't have the rhythm here, but it's uh, quite a bradycardic rhythm with uh, some long dialogue. Uh, diastolic period, so we were discussing in all these kind of situations to have a stabilized, you know, rhythm for the valve implantation. 
And uh, of course, in these cases, to obtain that is just by using the pacing. Of course, not at a very high rate, but uh, we have a bradycardia at 50-55, so we will ask for a pacing at 65-70, so to avoid a long diastolic at the time of the implantation. Because here, if we look together in advance to the valve implantation, what we are facing here, or what we are going to face, it's uh, what we can call a very low fixation uh, valve implantation by the fact that there is not too much calcifications. So at the time of the implantation, you know, the valve, if there is some diastolic or whatever, may eventually move. Mm -hmm. Despite, you know, we will try to explain to you the wire technique, which is just a, a way to implant the valve that stabilizes a little more the valve at the time of the implantation. But when there is no, no calcification, the fixation is still weak. Mm -hmm. So we have to count on it. And if the valve is moving, and if you have a very severe hypertrophic, I don't know if it's a severe hypertrophic here. It's a severe mm. hypertrophic uh, ventricle below? Relatively. So in these cases, what we can use for safety is pace the patient at the time of the crucial time, just the crucial time of the valve implantation, where the fixation to the anatomy is going to, to, be, to be achieved. Then in these cases, like for an Edwards case, we pace. Mm. And then we implant for two or two centimeters, and then we decrease and stop the pacing when the fixation is, is more strong mm -hmm. at this time of the implantation. So this is what we could do, mm -hmm. you know, considering this anatomy which is not valid when it's a very calcified valve. Like yesterday, we didn't care yes. about it because it was very calcified, so you don't need. Here, you never know to avoid to have the valve that poop up, you know, for a long diastolic mm -hmm. or whatever, or because you have maybe it's a 22 and you have a 26 uh, valve, so it could be, you know, a little limit and the fixation could be not so strong. So let's assume that we may fail that and um, we will use pacing just for secure the, the tricky critical time of the implantation mm -hmm. okay okay any comments this, this is a very important yeah the, I think so? uh, Jean-Claude this is a very important point while I usually don't pace but here with a heart rate but between what 45 and 60 55 um, 47 this is actually now. an indication where I would where I would actually also pace just to make sure that the heart rate is regular and that you don't have Definitely. a long diastole which kicks all of a sudden kicks the valve up okay. or something Perfect. So I think this is a very important point because um, the heart rate seems to be Floor. low. Floor. So is the valve ready now? Yes, we are. I just introduced the valve. I don't know if you have seen it, but I just introduced the valve. Kim is going to keep the, the Y in place. And I will just go across the aortic arch slowly, but uh, normally. And uh, maybe you pull a little on the wire because yes. you see there is a little of tension here. So yes. now we pull a little mm -hmm. and so leave the wire. Now it's okay. Could, could, okay. Could, yes. Could you tell us the, pro the protection, the, I'm sorry, the projection that you have? Yes, uh, we the, use uh, quite a LAO projection, you know, to, uh, uh, to uh, try to uh, align the, uh, to see the best we could the left main, to be honest, you know. Mm -hmm. Because all the discussion, mm -hmm. all the risks we assume here, it's a risk of the coronary. It's not a big one, but at least I don't assume that we will face PVL in this situation. Okay. So the only thing we could face is uh, a coronary. I doubt too. It should be a straightforward case. So what we did, we oriented the valve. Mm -hmm. And you see there is a two hooks are facing one to the other. So we know that the leaflet is on the upper part of the frame today. Mm -hmm. So if we implant in that direction, this part will go to the in front of the left main. So again, to don't have a commissure that will be in front of the left main in case of, that we make a mistake in the measurement. Mm -hmm. Do you want to call that? So what you can so do here. So are you looking at the. Yes, Eberhard, maybe are you, you want to make comment ring? about the ring? Yes, so we will modify a little the projection. Can okay. we go a little more caudal okay. to see? Exactly, I think it's, uh, it's already better. It's not perfect, but okay. I think we have more to assume product. that. I think it's okay. Maybe a little more LAO. Let's see. A little more LAO. LAO. And then it's going to be fine. Let's assume that it's fine here, okay? So, what we can do now, if you agree, we will make an NGO and assess again the, uh, the uh, anatomy of the patient. Are you ready for an injection? Yes, yes. yes. So, let's see. NGO. Sure. Okay, so let's review. As Take you can see, place, there is good. quite some regurgitation. So again and again, the pacing is going to be very welcome at the time of the implantation. 
because you have a bradycardy, uh, severe regurgitation, despite the pressure is 91.55, so it's decent pressure, we are fine. So here, I think that, uh, as you can see, we are a little too high, if everybody agree, slightly too high, but keep in mind that the valve at the time of the implantation will go very deeper. So we will begin the implantation here. So if you agree, you can turn, okay? And now you see the stabilization of the valve looks to be fine because the Y is, is correct. Maybe we can push a little on the Y to be sure. Mm -hmm. Endoscopy, you see, I push a little more because it was not completely on the, on the Y. Now it's more stabilized, probably. You see, you have some extra history, but now it's fine. Advance a little more. And I think here it could, could be good to begin here, okay? So maybe you can begin the, the rotation of the device. Yes, initially. Yes, uh, you can go a little quicker at the beginning, up to one centimeter, because the elasticity of the catheter, remember, huh? so you go, you just go. And normally, what we do, the first operator, myself, I don't know if you see, I'm not doing anything so far, okay? I just secure the valve, okay? And I would see, like you, what will happen when uh, Kim will deploy, okay? Mm -hmm. So you go. Now you can go okay. a little... Sh no, it's okay, continue, because the valve... I will That's pull right. a little here to keep the valve in the good Test position. It. Okay, just that. Okay, Test you go. Deploy. I just pull a little too much. Okay. Deploy. Deploy slowly. Slowly. So you can see that uh, Jean-Claude is deploying fairly highly, oh. knowing that the valve will go in, so he's not concerned too much. Now the, the, the sheath comes back. Yes, and I don't do anything. I'm just looking, Kim, okay? Keep yes. You go slowly, Kim. Keep going. Keep going, because it's stabilized, you know? Normally, if it's stabilized, you just have to go slowly. Mm -hmm. Now you deploy, the valve will begin to touch the anatomy, mm -hmm. okay? So you continue slowly, okay? Continue slowly. So, uh, JC, when are you going to start Stop pacing? here, mm -hmm. stop here. Uh, we will discuss it now. I would say, look, it's so far the, uh, uh, the outflow truck is not obstructed. You see, Kim have stopped, and you see the frame is going to expand by itself a while. Mm -hmm. So maybe here, what we can do is to make an angel again, mm -hmm. okay? okay? Just for the uh, yes. the interest Check. of the case and to discuss, okay? So Check. let's make an angel. Angel. You see, and we uh, we oh, just slightly. to assume if it's a good position. I agree. You agree that Kim, it's fine, no? If we four. continue, we have a four yeah. millimeters implantation yes. here, yes. no? Yes. Okay. Yes. So let's it's go back to Scopy. So it's good. You see, the pressure, the Y is in place, everything is, looks fine. There is some bradycardy. Mm -hmm. So normally we should have a pacing at 65, that will be more uh, effective. And after yeah. we'll ask for more, mm -hmm. you know, when we'll expand more. 60. Well, 65, because it's 42. Oh. This is not so good, 42. No? 70. Uh -huh. So are you securing with two hands or with one hand? No, just uh, two fingers. No. Uh, well, two fingers. I don't do anything here, to be <laughs> honest, you know? Okay, pacing and... and uh, but uh, pacing is not on. Can you pace at 70? Oh, 70. Something that okay, perfect. Two now we have a stabilized, just a stabilized pacing, uh, okay? 70. Okay. Are you ready? Yes. yes. So, okay, now it's stabilized. We have a yeah, decent yeah, pressure. Yeah. It's 105, 45, okay? Yeah, yeah, so yeah, it's yes. good. So let's come back to the screen. Yes. As you can see, the valve have continued to implant finally, slowly, mm -hmm. okay? Yes. So you have still some room. Mm -hmm. Maybe we can do an angel here, mm -hmm. just to see, you know, just for the Check for angel. having angel. everybody to follow the implantation. Oh, yeah. Okay, still, uh, still in place. Mm -hmm. So I come back to Scopy, okay? I will keep my hands here in case of, but I will just have a look like oh, you. Oh, now the second hand comes in. Okay, I take it out. Okay, <laughs> it's out. I don't do anything, okay? Can you deploy slowly? Yes. Very slowly? Yes. Okay? Stop again. Like we say, we will use pacing here. Okay, because now we are obstructing the outflow truck, it may move. Let's do a last angel, and then everybody will be agree or not. Okay? So it's fine? Okay? So because there is not too much calcification, let's do a pacing at 160. Okay, you go at 160, and you deploy normally, yes. Jean not quick. Jean-Claude, the yes. valve is coming down a little bit, right? Uh, let's, uh, we will do an angel. your one hand, that's magic. We will do an angel, we will do an angel. Yes. Okay. Check. Are you ready for an angel? Yes, yes. Okay. No, it's fine. So let's deploy. Pacing. Pacing. Oh, okay, 160.
perfect. Deploy the valve. Yes, slowly. Don't pay Plo attention. Continue Plo deploy. Plo 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 no deploy. Plo I will record at the same time, so everybody will look with you. Yes. Deploy. Whoa. Deploy. More yes. qu a little quicker. Not very quick, but a little quicker. Mm -hmm. Continue. Are you deploying or because I'm not looking? Let's go back to Scopy. Oh, okay, it's fine. Mm -hmm. I just record for you. Deploy. Yes. Deploy a little quicker because now it's fixed. So yeah. give a better fix. Uh -huh. Continue, plus continue, plus continue. Plus no, but quicker. Yes. You deploy. Plus ah, okay. Yeah. I don't know your room. Yeah. Sorry. Okay. <laughs> okay. That's fine. Okay. okay. Now you decrease the pacing. Decrease. Decrease. Shishi. Decrease. Shishi. Decrease. Shishi. decrease. 70. Just go to 70 again. Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. The pressure is going on. And we wait. You see, the pressure is already mm -hmm. at uh, 100, no, 80, 85, 440. Yes. Yes. Okay. So we have still the pigtail in place. Yes. So we can uh, check if the valve is in a good position. Yeah, okay. Yeah. So we do an angel. So I just Pre press. Are you ready for the angel? Yes. Yes. So do the angel. Oh, yeah. Okay. okay. So the valve looks okay. to be, I don't know about, looks to be in the good position. If we look yep. back to the ostium of the left main now, you know, what we can do is to deploy a little more the frame to see. Mm -hmm. So deploy a little more without comple completely the... the uh, I know. Okay? Yes. Go to expand a little well, more, okay, so a little more again, it's not a big deal. Stay here. Mm -hmm. Okay? Just to assume how far you will go from uh, to the left main. Okay? So let's have a look with the last angel. Yes. Inject. Yeah, there is room, you see? Yeah. If you draw, you will stay at distance, whatever. Looks good. Okay? Yeah, very good. So I think we can deploy the valve now. Yeah, I just take yeah. off the pigtail. Yeah. Yes. Uh, it's not mandatory, but okay. it's, uh, we don't need any more the pigtail for this implantation, okay. and you implant. Mm -hmm. what, Release. what I do in general, I take off the wire. You see yes. the wire? You take it out. You see, you disconnect the distal tip. Mm -hmm. So eventually, mm -hmm. if there is any things that happen, mm -hmm. You know, uh, it will not bring the valve with you. Yeah, yeah, and you take off the pressure on it. Yeah, yeah. And then you deploy the last part. Just, I record the last part for everybody. Uh, okay, you deploy it. Continue to deploy. It's different. Up to the okay. ick, click, okay? Okay, it's good. Okay, Completely. now you look for the hooks. They are disconnected, as you can see, uh -huh. you know? So, and the distal tip of the frame is not an, is not an issue. So you advance the wire to keep the, the wire in place. Uh -huh. Continue advance the wire, Kim. More, more, yes, more, yes, more. Yes, Just yes, continue. Yes. Yeah, perfect. Perf perfect, uh -huh. yes. <laughs> it's perfect. Then we continue. Yes. Very nice. Looks good. Here. Okay. You Done. So, he's so keep the wine place. Yes. Keep the Your pigtail pressure tracing is a bit strange. Uh, sorry? Uh, sorry? The pressure tracing of the pigtail is a bit strange. Why the curve, the tracing. I don't know uh, what you mean. Uh, let's take that it's out. The pressure mm -hmm. tracing. The pressure? Uh, the, the 56, yes, I agree. I didn't follow you at the, at the, uh, at the time. Yes, yes. Uh, it's very weird that because uh, there is no reason, so I don't know. Uh, can we uh, check the pressure? Yes. Or advance this and check the pressure? Pressure? Pivotel? Pivotel. 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 Because it's quite bleeding here with this introducer. Eh? Mm -hmm. If you can, uh, yes, if you can advance something here. Mm -hmm. Because the pressure is 100 and 110, how much it is? But so here, below we have a nice pressure, and at the upper part we have another pressure. So I don't know which one is a good one. So can we take the pressure here mm -hmm. to have a look? Many points to be on there. Yeah, the, pressure. High pressure <laughs> the higher one is always the better okay. one. Yeah, but it's 120, so I'm not. I will be pleased to share with you a pressure that we, we are all satisfied with. So let's have a look here, Kim. So, well, that is uh, 160 or something like that. Yes. So there is an issue with the upper one. <laughs> I suppose. But Paul was right. It's very important to follow this, uh, the hemodynamic. Uh -huh. But here, uh, we have not too much concern. We I hope you see the last, uh, the, 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 the line is in red, no? Red line. So of course, it depends on what are the scale again. Eh? Uh -huh. 
So let's see with a pig tail to, to check the yeah, gradient yeah. and yes. more than the gradient, the, uh, the end diastolic pressure, okay? Yes. Uh, you should move for another introducer. Huh? Is there any reason why uh, T was not uh, uh, employed in this procedure? as uh, compared to the first procedure because good point, if you uh, see the uh, CT findings, I see that uh, there was significant ventricular hypertrophy and yes. there might be some no, sort of sorry, mitral valve involvement also or uh, I don't know that to be case, honest. T would be uh, very important. Uh, I think T is always uh, good to have, especially if you have chosen the general anesthesia, uh, there is not too much reason to don't use it. You know, uh, it will give us also the same uh, fetcher than before, the days uh, PVL or not, uh, and the also location of the valve, because when there is no calcification, uh, if you implant it high or low, it's very difficult to assume and to assess, to be honest. So, uh, TE is, uh, agree with you, could have been a nice solution here. So, for the pressure, I cannot conclude too much. It looks uh, maybe not too bad. But uh, I don't know if the red, the green, uh, which one to choose. Uh, if it's the, the, the red, is, uh, it is a gradient. No, it's if it's the uh, green. If you take the green, green uh, we, have a, we have a very, very impressive valve that yeah. gives more pressure in the aorta yeah. than in the ventricle. Mm -hmm. So that's, uh, <laughs> that's something. So I think it's going to be, I think it's fine, you know. Uh, of course, uh, we should flush and uh, assume a little better and do again the zero or if we have time to, uh, to uh, highlight the value of the hemodynamic that in these cases we don't highlight it too much because it's not perfect. Mm. So if we have time, did we have time? We have time. We have time. Yes. So maybe we can try to align the value of hemodynamic here by flushing and having a better, better uh, yes. measurement, you yes. know, and make a choice between the red or the green. There is something that is not normal. Mm -hmm. you know? So if you can flush it and uh, flush all this to, to try to, to have a more decent uh, hemodynamic feature at the end. Yeah, yeah. You get it? And pig tail. Ah, pig tail. And you do the zero again eh? uh -huh. and take off the green. Yeah, I don't know why it's the green. Yeah. Eh? Is it the green, this one? Shen, how do you, how do you, um, now we have a little bit more time. We were told that we have almost uh, 30 more minutes. So why don't you deploy another valve for us? Okay, can you uh, load the 26, please? Why? Eberhard wants we deploy <laughs> another valve, you know? Yes, <laughs> a sapien valve. Oh, yes, yeah, so a sapien valve, why not? It's, uh, it's okay. But let's, uh, in this case, let's see a PVL at least before doing that, you know? So, um, if you, um, you know, Columbia doesn't do any angiograms post implant anymore. Uh, what's your practice in Vancouver? Uh, so, let's do an angiogram. We will use, uh, we like for the, the most time, we use uh, TE. So, with the TE, is an angiogram, I, I don't think it's uh, very necessary. So, I, we uh, practice usually, so if, uh, if renal function is normal, we are. Uh, I prefer to have an aortogram, but if we, we know it's not Achilles. normal, uh, if Achilles. echo is uh, okay and satisfied with the position and uh, 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 might allow less, and I will, will just ex skip uh, we do the, uh, this the one? aortogram. Yes. Yes. Okay. Yes. So we advance this one? Yes. Oh, this is the comment the panel. Okay. Pretty straightforward, right? Okay. <laughs> what he did. Hello, Angel. Uh, Dr. Gruber, can you comment? Uh, I don't have take this uh, one too out, much eh? experience with the uh, core valve. Uh, for the balloon uh, valve dilat pre dilatation, is it more important in the core valve compared to the sapien valve? Because so core valve is self expandable, and yeah, yeah, in the other sapien projection. is yeah, yeah. more balloon okay. dilated. Yeah. Is, uh, there's a lot of uh, radio force, and the uh, wow. BAB is really wow. not so even in the very really calcified area. So, well, we have no any, anything here. Yeah, I, yes, uh, just maybe. very briefly, this is an excellent result, Jean-Claude. Wow. No, it's and perfect. Dr. Kim, of course, excellent. <laughs> yes. It and wasn't Jean Claude, it was Dr. Kim. Yes, because it. exactly, <laughs> the second operator, I was just, uh, you know, securing the implantation, to be honest. I've not done anything. Just two millimeters. Yeah, the way he deployed the valve, that was important. You know, the, the spinning was good. You were just holding it with your magic hand. Well, I don't know. It's just uh, excellent result. But at the end, it's good. But we were not concerned about PVL because there is no calcifications. No. 
Well, quite frankly, I was not so sure, but uh, obviously, you know, you've proven to be right. The valve actually sits in a, in a perfect position. It's, 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 it's if at all, for uh, no AI. And you can see what Jean-Claude did when he was looking at the valve. The lower part was a little bit deeper in, but he was at the same time looking at the upper edge. And uh, he wanted to make sure that the upper edge is not intraannular. And you can see the upper edge is uh, maybe two millimeter. It's, a, it's just wonderful. It's very, very nice. Mm -hmm. So you, you set the bar, you two, uh, this morning, set the bar for, for excellent results here. As far as the predilatation for sapien is concerned, to me it makes probably no sense to not do predilatation in the sapien. Um, and I, I don't know too many, many people that are not doing it. Here, it's just, it's just uh, because of the self-expansion and the protected sheath, I just felt a little bit more secure. But for the sapien, we usually pre-dilate. So you, so you feel the, the sapien is more important? For the Whether it's more important or not, I don't know. Um, I know that, that uh, Eulogio has done, uh, he has also, also published this series now, he has done a series of, of um, sapiens without predilatation. He lost two valves. <laughs> and I don't really think if you, if you encounter a problem, then I don't really see the value of predilating. I'm not doing it because I want it to be faster or I want it to, be, um, to do something different. Um, if, it's not, if it's necessary to do it, then I do it. If, if, uh, if the sapien... Um, just for the heck of it, I, 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 I don't see any good reason not, not to predilate, unless we have proof to believe that predilatation causes stroke or, you know, some of these things. I think this is a, a very uh, educational case for the interventionist. First of all, compared to the, the first cases, the patient age is 70, and this patient is 80. And uh, when you look at the, think about the procedure time, uh, to the Edward and uh, uh, core valve. In this patient, is a patient age is 80, and the anomalous location of the right coronary osteum, and uh, the procedure itself is uh, just a deplo stent deployment, uh, and then the end of the procedure. Therefore, to reduce the, the, some, the uh, cardiac injury during the procedure, and uh, one of them is uh, without the predilation, we usually think about that there is uh, the embolic risk during the TABI procedure in the stand deployment or the predilation. So to uh, totally reduce the, such kind of the uh, interventional procedure, and uh, we, uh, we can easily see the uh, safe procedure in the, uh, using uh, uh, this patient using uh, the core valve system. Uh, Eberha, can I just ask, uh, what is your indication to do predilation nowadays? You say you rarely do predilation nowadays. Is there any lesions that you will predilate? Yeah, I, I predilate. I predilate the bicuspids. Bicuspid. Okay. Um, and other than that, I don't. I mean, I have to say, with one exception, if the calcification is like, it, it's not the amount of calcification, but it's the, it's the. Configuration of the calcium. If, if the calcifications are distributed, I don't, I don't worry. I'm worried about the big chunks uh, that are sitting there and that might deform the valve. Then I have to, you know, then I would probably consider predilatation. Um, but all the other ones, um, we don't predilate anymore. And valve area is not your concern. It's very tight valve still. And we don't have any higher rates of post deals, you know. In Bonn, we. We, we just don't do it anymore. It looks like a 22 mm -hmm. annulus because it's a straight line. So, Jean-Claude, um, yes. you, when you, when Jean -Claude, yes, could you, uh, b since we have some more time, could you uh, go back on the image a little bit? Because I wanted to point something out to the audience or ask you, um, the previous, see um, previous one? here, yeah. the valve, see here the valve is, a little bit deeper in. It's probably about eight on the lower part. Yes, but it's and oblique. On the eh? upper part. Yes. Yeah, yeah, I know. But, uh, but, but this is important to know because the, the valve opens up 
and the upper part looks good, so you were not concerned that the valve is too deep, correct? Mm, yes, correct, because uh, what I was looking for is at both edges, below the pigtail and uh, at the level of the left sinuses. That's why I look at the angel way, the left sinuses. The rest I don't care, because the valve will reorient, and uh, the projection here tells me that, you know, I just have to focus on these two lines. Between the uh, commissure, you know, between the right and the uh, non coronary sinuses, and the left side in front. And after if there is an angulation, it will be, it will be fixed, but this is, will finally, uh, you know, lead the final position of the valve. And um, when, when Dr. Kim deployed a little bit more, mm -hmm. did the valve come up a little bit or just, or just reoriented itself? I think uh, if you look together, let's yeah. have, we record everything. So let's have a look. Let's have a look here, one by one, and see what exactly was the final movement. But let's see. So next one. Here so it's still... You see, now it below the left, now it comes be up. Did you see it? before the left side, you have four millimeters. It's what you, you aim. Four in one stage and four in yes. the opposite side. And, and the step to the next, the valve came up a little bit by, re I, I think anyway, by reorienting. Because there, see? Uh, the frame is a little bit higher now. It's on, on the pigtail side uh, because, also. Because because it's more it's expanded. It's more expanding. So uh, before mm -hmm. it was squeezed. So if it's it's open, uh, it's open. Uh, you know, with a kind of uh, angulation, and then we go a little more. You know, the alignment of the frame goes at the. You know, uh, that's it's the alignment uh, during the implantation. It's not surprising. It's normal. Unfortunately, yeah. it's not a, like an Edwards. An Edwards, you go, you know, the frame goes all together in one side to the other one. Here, it's only the bottom part of it. The upper one still squeezed in the catheter, so it gives an angulation. So we cannot, uh, we cannot go without this feature. But you have to assume that after the next step, the frame will continue to expand and they will be, uh, you know, aligned together at the end. And at that stage, it's aligned now. Almost, not yeah. completely, but almost. Uh, Jaco, I have a question. Uh, excellent result of this one, but uh, I just question is uh, in terms of TE. Uh, if this case had a severe pelvic leak, if you had a great result, but I just say if, and uh, I believe you will do the balloon valve press uh, balloon again, uh, but after balloon, if we still have uh, some leak. Do you consider the TE or you will just uh, put another valve? Uh, you know, here we have to remember, you know, we are discussing in meeting a lot of PVL and the risk of mortality following PVL. I want just to tell you one thing here that I don't understand. You know, PVL will never give you a sudden death. He will give you heart failure, episode of heart failure, so he will give you time to address this issue. So, you know, at the time of the implantation, you could make a wrong assessment. It's not a big issue, you know, of course, if you have a severe extension, not at all. But if you are grade two, you know, to be conservative for a while, if the valve is correctly positioned, that means that if the skirt is in front of the leaflet of the patient, of course, and if it's too low, that's, it will, the patient will not, uh, have a, a decrease of PVL with time, okay? That's for sure. So in these cases, you consider valve in valve. But if you have a decent implantation, I think you have time. Just have a look. If your hemodynamic is correct, uh, maybe you do a balloon to, uh, to uh, maybe if, if you feel that the frame is not completely expanded. Otherwise, you, you could wait a while and follow your patient. This is something, keep that in mind. PVL will ne never give you a sudden death, I doubt. Yeah. But you either make a decision based on a purely aortogram or you consider TE before you make the final call? Uh, I consider hemodynamic uh, I consider and angio uh, because uh, in Europe, let's be very honest, you know, except in UK, we are doing general anesthesia and TE. The rest of Europe is going local anesthesia and the TE have disappeared from the room. So, and I cannot believe that transthoracic can compete with TE. 
So in these cases, I prefer to use whatever the NGO, if possible, and uh, the hemodynamic. And it's not completely perfect, it's what I said uh, yesterday. Even the echo is not so perfect, despite it's said everywhere, you know, but by the fact that uh, this, uh, this procedure are going more and more in local anesthesia, uh, unfortunately the TE is disappearing from the, from the imaging that you got during implantation. So you have to face more of the time, you know, it's not you to decide, it's uh, the team. And let's be honest, if we discuss that in five years, maybe you will see that it's probably 80% uh, of the cases will have been performed with local anesthesia. So it's a trend that I'm not sure is going to move. So uh, TE, for those who use it, uh, I'm pleased for them. For those who don't use it, you can do without, of course, and you have no choice. We can TE. But we can TE uh, here. Huh? But here there is not uh, too, too much you reason. Know, as you know, as you know, the, as a surgeon, we do the open valve, uh, aortic valve replacement, or any valve replacement. It's mandatory to have a TE mm -hmm. uh, post-op. And you know, that as, a, as a surgeon, we put the valve in, we suture it, and we tighten it, and we know that the pedal valve leak should be a pulley, you know, uh, minimal or less. And uh, it's pretty standard, uh, basically, it's mandatory to have a TE after valve replacement in North America. So but, yeah, but it's I normal because you don't have angio. Uh, so you have to have something. Yeah. How, how can uh, this is acceptable to to the uh, uh, medical community without TE with this procedure? Yeah, because in, uh, no, let me remember you that in surgery you don't have the hemodynamic and you don't have the angio, so it's normal to have TE. But when you have the angio and, and the uh, hemodynamic. To have the TE is good, I'm not opposed to it, but it's not mandatory. So I think, you know, to just to give you a, um, an, well, how we do it, we do it a little bit different than Jean-Claude says. We just go by NGO and hemodynamics. If we, if we are in doubt, we will always look with echo, because we wanted to know the details of what's really happening, why are we having it, where do we have it, and since we have an excellent echocardiographer, we rely on him in terms of looking a little bit more into the details why there is a leak. And then we decide what to do. We just, I mean, obviously there are straightforward cases where you have three, four, and then you don't have to worry about it because you have to move quickly and then put a second valve in. But there are many, many cases where, they are, where you, you know, you're in doubt between one, two, and two, three. You know, you don't really know. In doubt, we always look with an echo to see what the details are. Um, I, I know this, is, this can be discussed, obviously, and everybody does it a little bit differently. I am not, I, I am not in agreement with, uh, with Marty, or with the Columbia Group, I should say. Just you know, leave it alone, um, and, and no more, they don't do any pressure tracings anymore, and no more angiograms. Um, I think, you know, since we're dealing with, with the aortic valve implant, I think it's fair that we do a hemodynamic assessment apart from the echo. So um, we stay, still stay with the, uh, with the angiogram, very much like what Jean-Claude has done here. I don't know what the panel feels. Michael? Yeah, I, uh, we still usually do um, 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 uh, LVN diastolic uh, pressure at the end of the procedure just uh, to make sure that we got a good result and then the angiogram. Sometimes we might even need um, uh, uh, the other views uh, of the angiogram just to make sure, especially for the bicuspid valve. Mm -hmm. The other view will show that the valve is not really adequately uh, dilated. So I think uh, it's because it's uh, such a high-risk procedure, after such a procedure, I would usually confirm that we got a good result at the end of the procedure. And uh, I have to stress that John Claw actually has taught us a very good technique, a trick at the end of the procedure. He pulled the wire before uh, disconnect the, the valve from the catheter, which actually released all the tension of this whole system. So that would prevent the valve from jumping up mm -hmm. or actually uh, jumping into the uh, LV. John Claude, do you usually do this at the end of the... Yes, procedure? and I guess you have this, uh, the, the run is uh, lighting what you are saying. And maybe you can see at the end the disconnection of the last hook, mm -hmm. you know, and you see by yourself that I was not pulling at all because the catheter don't jump at all, right. but stay at the same place. Mm -hmm. 
So that I like you also the technique that have been used here that the first operator was not doing anything. Mm -hmm. And it is quite mandatory when you have no calcification that fix the valve to place the valve and plant the valve without giving tension on the catheter and on the valve because you may face a movement of the valve at the, ta at the, at the final implantation. So this is also, if you see at the last second, you see the catheter just disconnect but don't jump because there were no tension on it. Here, yeah, now. Very nice. That can sometimes very, be very painful nice. if you can't <laughs> get the hooks of the, uh, of the device. You just have to be patient. Okay, um, I, I don't know. Uh, we have 10 more minutes. Is Dr. Kim here already? Which Kim? Because Kim is close to me. No, no, no. No, no, no. This is the other Dr. Kim, yes. which, okay. uh, yeah, which um, Kim the, the that's giving the lecture. Uh, but um, I think everything has been said so far. And um, it was a very brilliant demonstration of a core valve procedure in a very controlled way. We thank Dr. Kim that he helped Dr. Labor to deploy the valve correctly. <laughs> so Sorry, that's excellent. Maybe, maybe just one Paul has one more thing, uh, Jean-Claude. Maybe just one last discussion. Well, uh, after these valve implantation, how do you control your uh, patient's hemodynamics in the ICU or in the ward? I mean, sometimes the patient will have refractory hypertension. Uh, mm -hmm. after the valve uh, implantation. So what is your ideal or wished range of uh, blood pressure afterwards? Uh, Paul, you will be, de well, you, will be uh, you know, probably uh, surprised, but I'm not taking care too much of that. Mm -hmm. So I will not, you know, I do know how to do it, but it's more my partner would take care of this issue. And uh, it is true, it is very true that all patients, because it's uh, really 80 or more, they face some, uh, sometimes some uh, hypertension following by hypotension and, the, and they are very sensitive to drugs. So it is not so easy to uh, finally uh, manage this part, you know, and planting the valve is the easier part. Finally, uh, the outcome and the follow-up is crucial and uh, the management of the pressure is still, you know, not so easy. So I will not uh, give recommendation between beta blocker that somebody refused to use for the risk of AV block and uh, the management with uh, finally a nitrate that in general you get a really good answer in all patients, but of course the pressure sometimes goes too low, so it's not so easy. So I will not give you too much recommendation about the kind of drugs you are better than others. So I just let these to the physician that take care of this part. In my department, I'm lucky to don't have to manage that because it's not so easy and it's crucial. There's one thing though that I would like to point out traveling around the world a lot and seeing a lot of different teams. The importance of an anesthesiologist that understands the mm. procedure is fundamentally important. We, I know we don't see him here in the transmissions because they're always in the background. If they screw up, you can do whatever you want to do and the patient will not recover. The anesthesiologist has to understand the procedure, what's happening during the procedure, when the pressure is going to be fluctuating. He should maintain, ideally, at least in my view, the pressure uh, above 100. We should not deploy the, the core valve um, below 100. Uh, and then, you know, to, to avoid overshoot of the pressure, um, like what we usually or sometimes see when the pressure is down, they give drugs and then it goes up to 280. This is something that we don't like to see. Mm -hmm. So the anesthesiology control of the patient during the procedure and post-procedure is fundamentally important. And we have seen many patients going down because the anesthesiologist wasn't on top of things and uh, we lost the patient because of that. Remember, these patients are all sick and uh, they don't have normal ventricles, even if they have uh, normal ejection fractions. They have something um, that has changed the structure and if the pressure goes down, uh, um, you know, goes down under 60, 50, doing the, even before you put the valve in, the patient usually does not recover. So this is a very, very important aspect uh, of the teamwork here that the anesthesiologist understands what he's doing uh, in view of, of uh, aortic stenosis. The surgeons know this, but they have a little bit of the advantage if you're, off, if you're on pump that you have a little bit more tolerance. 
but at the end of the day, uh, it's, I think it's doing the procedure very important. Don't you think, Sam? Uh, uh, well, uh, I think uh, this is a very, very, very uh, important yes. Uh, yes. Uh, point. Yes. And, uh, yes. you know, uh, anesthetist is extremely important hmm? in terms of uh, keeping a patient stable. You want uh, to and, uh, we can you know, if I go to Proctor and uh, I always uh, talk to the anesthetist, uh, review the everything before the case, I found that this is the most uh, critical part because, as uh, Dr. Gruber said, if the pressures not come up quickly, patients are usually uh, deteriorate and then you force you to put a um, pump. That's very critical. And uh, also, the anesthetic, like, uh, during the open heart surgery, they usually give, the, give a small bolus and a wait and to see. But for this kind of case, if pressure low, you cannot wait because you wait one minute to see whether the response and the two minutes response, and if not enough, you give another dose, that's too long because the patient is probably not recovery. So you usually need a more aggressive uh, in terms of uh, to put the uh, pressure uh, up. I think this is a very, very critical point. Okay, maybe so Jean-Claude, Dr. Klim, uh, thank maybe, you very, very ah, much. Okay. Otherwise, it was to discuss <laughs> the last, if you have two minutes or not. This if you have two minutes, it's just okay, to so discuss with you what will be your strategy regarding these 80 years old ladies with uh, previous stenting and with atrial fibrillation. What will be your recommending strategy regarding the follow-up? Are you putting the patient on coumadin with aspirin, coumadin alone, aspirin ticlopidil? What will be your recommendation at the panel? Just to uh, discuss with you this last uh, maybe uh, well, question that we could have. Did you um, you ask question with a replacement and stent? No, I'm staying the history. She have a coronary stenting, and she is under atrial fibrillation. So, what will be your drug strategy? Yes. Is it the association of coumadin with aspirin, coumadin alone, yes. uh, no coumadin, and uh, clopidogrel and aspirin? What will be the recommended strategy considering the situation here? Eighty years old ladies. That's a good point. Uh, I. I my opinion, if this patient has no contraindication for the warfarin, at, at least uh, this patient needs a warfarin. And uh, I will also put the aspirin because he has a stent. So I will, I will use a combination of aspirin, baby dose, and uh, warfarin. I like this strategy, to be honest. There's no title. Okay. Okay, Eberhard, okay, so I think we, I we, uh, finished we, the, we finished this our live yeah, session, session. So we, uh, I guess we don't have any uh, break, so we are going for the next uh, uh, 